You know how some countries have mandatory conscription, where at a certain age you're required to join the military? I know they do this in places like Singapore and Egypt. And honestly, I think that we should have something similar to this, but for customer service. I genuinely believe that the world would be a much better and kinder place if everyone was subjected to the horrors of being a customer service rep for any company. Because if you've ever worked in customer service, you're probably stronger than a Marine. I want you to ask yourself, what's scarier? staring down the barrel of an AK-47 and coming face to face with death itself, or a 45 year old white woman with this haircut walking right at you. The thing about customer service is that nearly everyone has some sort of experience with it. Whether you're 25 working at a call center for 15 an hour to pay your bills, or you're 15 and took the first job that will hire you because you saw Goku in the Fortnite item shop. Even if you've never worked a customer service job, you've probably interacted with a customer service employee before. And if you were really paying attention, you might have noticed that they're all dead inside. Let's take a second to really unpack this job description. Customer service. And there are a lot of jobs that serve people. Firefighters save lives, waiters bring your food to your table, doctors cure your illnesses. And one thing in common with all of these professions is that all of the people they serve actually need help. In customer service, no one actually needs help. Instead, people just want you to do everything for them. I feel like my years of working in customer service have prepared me for fatherhood because customers are actually more like babies. They can't read, they can't do anything on their own, and they also whine constantly. Here's an example of what it's like working in customer service. Thank you for calling Red Button Incorporated. This is Suburban Will. How can I help you today? Yeah, so I received my big red button in the mail today, but I'm not really sure what to do with it. I don't see any instructions. Okay, so do you have the button in front of you? Yeah, it's right here. Okay, sir, so what does it say on top of the button? Uh, it says, press this button. Okay, so can you press it? I'm not sure. Can you press the button for me? How would I do that, sir? Oh, I thought I could do this over the phone. Why does it say call if you need assistance if I can't do this over the phone? Okay, well, I'm happy to answer any questions, but it's literally impossible for me to physically press the button over the phone. Do you understand that? You know what? This isn't very helpful. Do you have a manager I can speak to? Well, I don't see how a manager could help, but I think we could maybe work something yeah, just out. Give me a manager. <sighs> Please hold for a manager. If there's one thing working in customer service has taught me is that there truly is no limit to some people's entitlement. Like people treat you like a superhero in that they expect you to move mountains for them while also looking down at you like a piece of dirt under their shoe. Like lady, this is customer service, not slavery. In college, I worked in the student center at the information desk. And 90% of the time, this job was chill. One of my favorite jobs I've ever had. But I went to a really big football school and the football stadium is right next to the student center. So during football season, what was normally a pretty chill job suddenly became the most stressful experience known to man. The population basically tripled every time there was a home game. And this is where I learned that when it comes to customer service, being good at your job isn't enough. These people don't need service, they need Jesus, literally. Some of the things I've been asked to do were more difficult than turning water into wine. I was about to start having people join me in prayer because they were asking me for a miracle. I remember one time this lady comes up to the desk on game day and asks if she could leave her purse with us because per stadium policy, only clear bags are allowed inside. So naturally I say, sorry ma'am, no can do. And she's like, oh, come on, it's just one purse. I'm sure it wouldn't be too much trouble. To which I reply, yes, ma'am, if it was just one purse, it wouldn't be a problem. But you are actually the 70th person today who has asked me to hold their bag. And unfortunately, this isn't the airport, so we don't check bags here. And then she walks away. Later, I'm doing my rounds, making sure the building isn't like falling apart. And what do I see? A purse. Basically, since we wouldn't hold her bag for her, this lady happened to lose her bag five feet away from the desk. And now since it's technically a lost item, I'm required to bring it back to the lost and found and log the item. And this wouldn't have been a problem if there weren't already 50 people who had the same idea. So now I'm stuck at the end of my shift sorting through people's lost baggage to return their items to them. Now I've talked about the service part of the job, but now let's talk about the customers. And one thing customers love to do is ask for a manager. I've never really understood the thought process behind asking for a manager, because who do you think told me to tell you no in the first place? All the manager's gonna do is come out here and tell you the exact same thing I just told you, except she's gonna be pissed. The crazy part though, is that I've also been a manager too. And the manager's job isn't to help you, 
Their job is to make you go away. At one of my jobs, we had this lady, and I won't say her name, but it rhymes with Sharon, and she was there demanding a refund for a product that was already open, she didn't have the receipt for, and that she purchased six months ago. So I'm like, ma'am, six months, you're basically married to the thing. So unfortunately, I can't give you a refund. And of course, she won't take no for an answer and demands to see my manager. So I go in the back and get her, and the lady asks for a refund again. Obviously, my manager tells her exactly what I just told her, and she still won't take no for an answer. So then my manager just goes, all right, ma'am, there actually is one thing we can do. I can create a ticket for our escalation team to see if we can get you a refund. I'll just need to write down your information. So my manager takes down her info and the lady thanks her and finally leaves. And you wanna know what my manager did with that lady's information? Threw it right in the trash. We already told you 20 times that we can't give you a refund. What, did you think corporate just changed their policy within the last 30 seconds? All my manager did was pretend to pull some strings to make the customer think she did something. And that's what I think customer service is all about, lying. A lot of people wonder why someone might subject themselves to working in customer service. And I remember when I interviewed for my last job, the interviewer asked me, so why do you wanna work here? And I remember my answer was something along the lines of, well, I'm a people person and I really enjoy talking to people, which is true. As annoying as some people are, working in customer service was fun for me because at least I got to spend my day interacting with people and helping out where I could, which was better than my first job out of college because all I did there was sit in a cubicle and listen to podcasts all day. My coworkers were also usually really chill people and it was fun hanging out with them to pass the time on a shift when things weren't busy. Customer service jobs are also really easy to get because people quit all the time since the job kind of sucks. But I think my favorite thing about working in customer service was just getting the chance to experience humanity at its finest. I remember on my first day of training for my job at the student center, my manager brought out this book. And in the very back of it, there was a picture of a lady taken on one of the security cameras. And he explained to me that this woman is banned from the building because about four months ago, she walked in and tried to set the place on fire by stuffing balls of aluminum foil in the microwave and turning it on. And then he says, if you ever see this woman, call the police immediately. And with that, he left me there by myself to start my first shift. Thanks for watching the video. By the way, if you haven't already, you should follow the worst account on Twitter at underscore suburban will. I'm super funny over there, like on God. Also, don't forget to sub. Peace.